yeah, I finished. I finished this book. Now I'm going to review it. Slash rant. I don't know. This book is The Anatomy of Violence, The Biological Root of Crime by Adrian Rain. This book was published in April of 2013 by Pantheon Books. Uh, this edition has 496 pages, but I think like 100 of them are notes. Over 100 of the pages are notes and the bibliography and the index. And this book only has 18 ratings on Goodreads. I heard about this book on NPR and I heard the author speaking about it and I thought it was a very interesting topic. And it's not like I'm totally going to refute the things that he said in this book, but some of the things that he said in this book were just like, what? That's... Especially the end, oh my gosh. This book pretty much is talking about ways uh, that people are predispositioned to do crime. And it literally goes into, you know, it compares criminals' brains to control or normal people's brains and how different types of crimes, like violent crimes, there's a pattern in the structures in their brains. Like uh, certain parts of the brains aren't as developed, some parts are overly developed, and what can cause those types of structures to form in the brain to predispose some people to crime. Sometimes, you know, despite someone being raised in a completely loving and caring environment, they still end up going to do crime, but most of the time it is compounded by the socioeconomical environment that the person is in. And one thing, the tone of this book is kind of pompous. It regularly addresses the reader with all of these rhetorical questions and he, he gives all of these tidbits of his life um, which I don't think were very crucial. And Okay, so I had notes on this and I had to write notes while reading this and I think that at times the book confused like math, math would confuse correlation and causation. I felt that it was kind of overreaching in certain senses of we know like if we only tweak this, this will solve the problem, the problem I guess, or if we found we took this gene out or we took this, or we fixed this, this thing in the brain and that will solve the problems or something like that. One big thing I felt that it didn't give a clear definition of what the terms that he was using what they meant to him in the context because there are times where there was one thing that he stated it has been established scientifically that environment have no impact on someone's personality and he cited a study but then eventually later on in the book he describes on how someone's environment can really impact someone's brain development I would think if someone's predisposed to violence and antisocial behavior that is a part of their personality. So I don't know what he meant by, at the beginning of the book, environment doesn't affect personality. Oh wait, environment can drastically influence someone's brain when they grow up. I mean, I was like, where? Disjointed? Another problem that I had with this is that most of these studies are done with men. They go to prisons, men, male prisons, and they get all of these brain scans done. I don't really think it's very hard to find, you know, a woman's prison and then scan their brains as well. But at one point in the book he admitted like, oh yeah, that study I told you about that I did, well, first we started out doing women, but then we were kind of short on money so we were like, meh. But we got 17 women, so that should be good enough. And then they went on to continue the studies studying exclusively men. And I was like, I don't really think 17 women provides enough data points to conclusively speak to violence in people in general or like w in women. At one point he does say that the crime statistics for women are lower. It might be due f to cultural, social, and environmental reasons that restrict women from being as violent as men. But then at another point he was saying that like women are just angels and men are we're just we're just natural violent brutes and I'm sorry but we are just violent people ladies. That is why we're only studying men. And and then he goes on to describe the serial killer's upbringing and his mother is absolutely horrible. Horrible. Like she is physically emotionally abusive and 
neglectful. I mean, she doesn't cook for her son. She only cooks for her pimp and clients. And she found out that he had a favorite mule. So she just decided to shoot it and then beat her son because she had to pay someone to get the body of the mule moved from the property. And she just like would just beat her son for no reason. And surprise, surprise, this kid grows up to be a serial killer killing exclusively women. Yet, this whole book ignores women like that. This whole book ignores what does the brain look like for women who drown their kids in the bathtub, who neglect their kids, who abandon their kids, who, like, there are women who physically molest children and ignores that. And also there are, I think, I think there, there are women who do physically abuse their partners. I mean, there are women who do that, but I think culturally we ignore all of those things as total flukes, and then, you know, if a guy would call up and was like, hey, police officer, my wife is beating me, I mean, culturally, it it might be very likely that the police officer is like, yeah, yeah, right, you can't handle your woman, and then they ignore that call. You know, it just ignores violence in women. Like, if you're gonna, like, look, examine violence in humans, you have to look at women as well, even though we don't make up a bulk, the bulk of violent crime statistics. I think it's fair to actually look at maybe what's different in women or what is restricting women from being violent instead of just, you know, guesstimating and saying like, yeah, that guess is good enough. Let's just continue looking at men. So frustrating. Oh yeah. And then there was another part that I just was like, fuck you. I read this part and I just had to mark it. It's talking about mental illness. A section is called mental illness makes her meanest. Health is a multifaceted construct and it acts in ways other than diet and environmental toxins to shape violence. Let's not forget mental health. Biological impairments can also make men mad. And madness can make men mean. Women too. Perhaps more so than men. Here's the thing. Um, this book is full of, you know, the superscripts for, you know, the notes section in the back of where, where, that, where he got that little tidbits from. Well, you know, here is... Here's the beginning of that paragraph, you know, here's the beginning of paragraph right here, and this is where he says, you know, women too, maybe even more than men. And then, where is that superscript for that little information tidbit? Since obviously he, he does have access, and he this is book is well researched. Where's the next subscript? Oh yeah, this is the next subscript right here. And then he doesn't even talk about mental illness in women. He just casually throws in women have maybe have higher rates of mental illness. He doesn't give any data. But then the rest of the book just just focuses on how men are more violent, and it's like it, that doesn't make sense. I mean. Like, how can you just casually say that about women, don't involve any data, and then totally just bring up studies that ignore women? I don't know. So, with all of that aside, it did get to a good part. I did like the chapters where it talked about the social factors, how poverty and having a disadvantaged background and living in like a violent environment can cause someone to develop an antisocial personality and therefore they're prone to crime. I liked those chapters and I thought the book was kind of getting better but then it got to the end and the end was just like 1984. Like who in the world would advocate in the future that all men once they reach 18 get a brain scan to reduce crime? What the hell is this guy advocating? And it's just crazy. It's just, it, I just, I had to shoot for that. I want to read more Philip K. Duck after this, really. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, like, this book has a lot of interesting data. It has pretty pictures, brain scans. I mean, like, these are interesting. You know, saying, like, this is a normal person. This is a murderer. He talked about IQ. And, like, if you are have a low IQ, you're prone to blue collar crime. But if you have a high IQ, you're prone to white collar crime. But. In the middle, if it's just right, you're going to be a normal citizen. And, I mean, he mentions, like, broken brains, and I don't know exactly what he means by that, because it seems like he's equating a healthy brain to someone who can live in this society 
this our our society as a normal productive citizen when our culture and society is a construct it's not like this is not the only way that humans can live so i think a lot of times he largely ignores culture in general at one point he did mention cultures that emphasize love as a goal over like money as a goal they have less violent crime but then he just most of the book he just throws out that type of um point of view as if the social economic um environment is what totally it totally accounts for if someone's going to be prim like a criminal instead of thinking about like our cultural constructs of like women you know in our culture and society we objectify women that might lead to violence against women i don't know and if someone grew up in a society which women weren't that objectified i don't what would happen yeah so yeah i choose two out of five stars i just felt really weird I might just get this book just to mark it up and just to really, I don't know, I just feel like I want more time to actually read all of his sources. Also, I want to read more books where it looks at sometimes the fault in a lot of studies like this. I'm not saying like this whole theory, this whole field is faulty. Some of the studies are set up with faulty logic sometimes and there are ways to really take out the, the elements of the study to weed out erroneous results and I think that um, some studies might be strengthened by taking out that you know that uncertainty um, I yeah I think I read one book like that one of the things I didn't appreciate about this book was that it, at times it was trying to say I'm going to definitively prove to you that this is the case when you can never really do that it's hard to do that one in science in general and two you're doing it with people and the brain and we don't completely understand the brain the best that you can do is say that these two things are correlated but you can't say definitively that one proves the other one causes the other it's very very hard to do that and you need a lot of you know samples and you need a lot of time and studies to do that and I think that the the way that people approach these studies isn't consistent enough that you can really definitively say that. I mean, yes, I admit that there are correlations, but this book is trying to argue really it's causation and that he knows the answer, which I kind of didn't appreciate, but it was just, what the fuck? Uh, I feel so strong about this book. I might just buy it because I feel so strongly and want to mark it up, but in general, I, I, there's some things I, I, I felt that were interesting and I thought he had a point with, but other things I just felt that he just ignored certain aspects or just went off on a really weird tangent. Would I recommend this book? If you've already read books like Delusions of Gender or like a lot of neuroscience books, I would recommend this book. You might want to scream at it, but it's interesting to read. It's an interesting read. That's all I have to say. It's an interesting read. That's all I have to say about that, so have fun. I'm done. <laughs>